Hello, everyone. This is Ben from Bybit. Welcome to another episode of the Bybit Product Talk. Sitting here with me is Bill, our product manager. Uh, today we got something very exciting for you.、Uh, the topic will be our upcoming expiration or future contract.、Uh, so myself wasn't so much involved in the product design, however, Bill is. So we got Bill on the show today, and we're going to be talking. A lot about what's coming up, and so you guys,、uh, it's gonna be a good juicy、uh, episode. So, Bill,、uh, first of thing first,、uh, what is this future contract or expiration contract、uh, we are about to launch?、Uh, yeah, sure. So,、uh, basically, a futures contract、uh, is very simple. It's just an agreement to buy or sell an asset at a future date、uh, at an agreed upon price. Uh, and the key element here for futures contract is the expiration date, which means the contract is gonna expire、uh, in, in, in some some day in the future,、uh, and it will be settled based on some predetermined terms and conditions.、Uh, specifically for our incoming quarterly futures,、uh, a couple of basic information here:、uh, the the underlying asset is gonna be BTC USD. Uh, and more pairs will will come after、uh, it goes live、uh, for for the futures contract,、uh, just like what we are operating for the、uh, USDT contract.、Uh, and secondly,、uh, it's gonna be quarterly expire.、Uh, for instance,、uh, if you are in January this year, you will be able to trade、uh, both March and June expire the futures contract at the same time.、Uh, and third point is that it's gonna be settled on the Friday of the、uh, of of、uh, of the quarter. Uh, the last Friday of the quarter.、Uh, also, it's gonna be cash settled,、uh, so there won't be any physical delivery involved.、Uh, hence, it is gonna be a great、uh, speculation vehicle. Okay. So, so that's the basic information about our quarterly futures contract. Okay. So first of all, it's gonna expire.、Uh, we're gonna be offering a three months quarterly expired、uh, contract. So. Meaning that、uh, once this contract expired, and if you're still holding a position,、uh, you will be settled、uh, and with cash, right? Ah,、uh, yeah. In, in,、uh, by by saying the cash is is not the U.S. dollars, but but it is is the cryptocurrency like、right. like BTC. Right.、Yeah. And the first pair we're going to be launching is the inverse BTC USD quarterly expiration contract, right? Ah,、uh, that's right. Okay. Cool. So、uh, I, I guess that sort of leads me to my second question. You know,、um, as a trader,、uh, why do I need to trade it, or why does Bybit、uh, at this point launching a expiration contract?、Uh, that's a really good question、uh, because there are indeed so many benefits、uh, of this、uh, futures contract.、Uh, just just a, a couple of things I want to talk of. First of all. Uh, since futures contract is just、uh, so simple and、uh, straightforward,、uh, the the underlying mechanism is less complicated compared to、uh, our perpetual contracts. It's a it's a pure directional play, and、uh, all the factors that、uh, will determine the price of a futures contract、uh, is kind of very limited. So just a couple of things you need to consider.、Uh, for example, like your your cost of capital.、Um, Because there is a very little storage cost of Bitcoin,、uh, not like、uh, other commodities like oil and gas, you you need to find a place to store them.、Um, but in Bitcoin case, you, you could custodian Bitcoin fairly easy with very low cost.、Uh, so if you、uh, have some like lower cost of capital,、uh, which means you could borrow money easily,、uh, you will be more likely to find some risk-free arbitrage opportunities in this market. Uh, I think for for many of the institutions out there,、uh, the futures contract is gonna、uh, present a lot of unique opportunities that、uh, perpetual contract、uh, are not able to offer. Okay,、uh, I, I, I guess my next question would be: I mean, you explained a sort of a holistic view of why a future contract is needed, but you know, as a trader, like I, I'm used to pretty much trading, you know,、uh, perpetual contract on Bybit. Why would I be trading a, a futures contract? Like, what specific features do you have that is, you know,、uh, different than the perpetual? Ah,、uh, yeah, sure. I think that's kind of like the topic of, ah,、uh, like comparing the the difference between expiry futures and the perpetual contract. Ah,、uh, they're definitely very different by design. Ah,、uh, so for for this new ah、uh, futures contract, 
uh, there's no funding rate involved. Uh, oh. You know, like based on the yeah, based on the mechanism of the perpetual, uh, the the funding rate is kind of like a, like a real time uh, evaluation of the market sentiment, which is very hard to evaluate. There's a lot of uncertainty around it. Um, but for the futures contract, it's a difference. Uh, if you see the 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 future price of Bitcoin is at 9200 on the market. You could you could just click a button. You 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 could long the position at, at the exact price, uh, and there's no uncertain things about the cost of your position. You know exactly how you're gonna pay for the position. So uh, if I'm holding a position uh, in the expiration contract, uh, as long as it doesn't expire within the expiration period. Uh, I don't need to pay any extra fees or, you know, I don't need to consider whether to get funding fees or being paid funding fees. Uh, I yeah, mean, that, that's exactly. a pretty good advantage uh, compared to current uh, perpetual. A lot of clients, if they want to hold the position for a longer period of time, uh, they always need to be worried about whether paying or, you know, uh, getting uh, the, the funding fees. Right. Because, but also like for the funding fee, like it's also just a very uncertain you know, like um, you, you don't know, like the vast majority of the market is going to vote on the long side or the short side. So it's very hard to determine uh, if you are going to receive the funding or, or pay the funding. And this uncertainty really increased the difficulty of, of trading for many of the traders out there. But the futures contract doesn't have this problem. Um, I see. I see. Also, I, mean, I, 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 yeah. heard, I think the, uh, the liquidation mechanism is different, right? Can you talk a little bit about uh, that? Yeah, so uh, if, if you are a trader of a futures contract in other markets, uh, you will know for futures contract, there's a something called a, the basis of the futures contract. Uh, so what that means is basically a price gap between the uh, spot asset price and the price in the future. So let's say like Bitcoin currently traded at, let's say like uh, 9,200 on the spot market, but you will uh, always expect a, like a little bit higher price, let's say like, um, like in six months for Bitcoin, um, because people could just like, uh, there, there's like a cost interest rate issue out there. Uh, and that lead to the, uh, the existence of the, the basis. Uh, just because of this basis, the liquidation mechanism is different from perpetual. Uh, when, when we build a uh, liquidation mechanism for perpetual, it's purely decided by the index price. That is the external factor, um, pure external factor, because no, no one could actually control it. But the mark price or the liquidation mechanism for the futures contract is decided by both the index and the, uh, and the market price of the contract. So it, it's kind of like a two factors. It is decided by both external and internal factors. Uh, and this is something you need to be pay attention by by the traders uh, if you are new to this uh, futures contract. So the futures contract, um, the liquidation is also triggered by the mark price uh, or the, the last price. Which price? Uh, it's triggered by the mark mark price. Okay. But so the mark price, okay. yeah. But the mark price is a, is a function of both external and the internal factors. Right. So the external here represents the index price which is something traded on the spot market, uh, not really for, for the price of the contract, which is the internal factor here. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, anything other features uh, of the futures, uh, expiration futures compared to perpetual contract? Uh, yeah, just the one thing about like the downside of this uh, futures contract is the future, the contract itself will expire. So right. if you want to, for example, like enter a position in the long term, uh, you probably need to roll over yourself. Like, let's say like you, you, you hold it like, uh, let's say right now it's January uh, and you want to hold the, the contract um, for like maybe like 12 months. Uh, you, you need to like uh, roll over the contract to yourself. Okay. Because right. yeah, yeah, well, that's a uh, general there. practice yeah. with any expiration contract, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, that's very cool. Uh, so I, I guess my next question is, uh, what are some of the features that uh, Bybit futures, you know, or expiration contract is going to support? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, basically, uh, 
one, one exciting thing about this uh, futures contract is when you are under the cross margin mode, uh, the margin is uh, going to share with the perpetual contract. Uh, and also the insurance pool is going to be shared uh, with the perpetual contract as well. Uh, basically, like for the quantitative trader, uh, if you want to trade both contracts, the, the margin you, you, uh, uh, you could be shared across two contracts, uh, which means you, you could do a lot of stuff with it. Oh, I mean, I understand one of the reasons we launching this uh, exploration contract was that a lot of uh, traders were requesting uh, to be able to do arbitrage between the futures and the uh, perpetual contract. So when you're making this uh, margin uh, on cross margin, basically uh, you, you have a much better way to utilize all of your margins. So you can have an open position in your perpetual contract using some margins and then yep. um, let's say I'm making floating profit in my perpetual contract. I can hypothetically even use that pro, uh, floating uh, profit to trade uh, open more position in my futures contract, right? Yeah, correct. So basically uh, the utilization of your capital will be um, much more efficient that way because you got so, more so that's more of uh, like what they call a portfolio margin right basically a cross paired combination of margin you can be using right well it's a little bit uh, uh, different from the portfolio margin um, but but it's definitely like a shared margin uh, so so yeah okay all right well, that, that's uh, very one more thing that I want to add here is that uh, you know, like on the on the inverse contract, we we have this uh, single mode uh, positioning opening, uh, and uh, for the USDT contract, we support this uh, bidirectional mode, uh, which means you could hold both long and short position at the same time. Right. Uh, we listen to a lot of uh, feedbacks from our of our users, uh, and uh, it's really dependent a lot on the users' uh, habits or uh, or traders like trading behavior. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's kind of not a single solution. Like people, some people like a single mode, and uh, some people like a bi-directional mode. Uh, so in this uh, futures contract, we are actually support both modes of opening positions. So we're gonna give traders the choice of picking like a single mode or uh, oh, bi-direction mode. Yeah. So uh, basically, you can switch between your position merged of long and short. So you have always have one single position or you can have the bi-directional basically holding long and short at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, while you're holding the same long and same short, you're perfectly hedged and you will never get liquidated, right? Yeah, that, that's Very right. exciting. That's yeah, right. I mean, I heard many people, you know, uh, because we offer the bilingual in USDT linear yeah. contract, they were like, well, why don't you have the merged for linear and then vice versa, versa uh, in the uh, you know, uh, our regular uh, inverse contract, they're asking for the bi-directional. So now we're making it both. It's like a switch, right? Yeah, it's like a switch, exactly. Like like you could set it up in your like trading preference. Very exciting. This is very good. Uh, it's just, this is pretty unique. Yeah, I think this is going to be only Bybit, yeah? Uh, well, I heard a couple of uh, other exchanges offering this as well. Um, but... Actually, I want to talk a little bit about how our new futures contract is going to differentiate itself from all the others. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are plenty yeah. of exchanges offering the, you know, expiration contract. How is our one going to be different than theirs? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to be honest, it's a, it's a tough question, but, but I appreciate you asking this. Uh, futures contract itself is a very mature contract tech, which has been used widely in both, like, traditional and crypto markets, uh, it's, which means like there's very little room for innovation. Um, but for, for us, I, we have built a really unique and robust risk management system. Uh, and uh, we're going to offer users uh, to use unrealized profits to open new positions. For example, if you make some money um, on your futures contract, you don't need to wait until it, uh, it is settled at an expiration date. You could use the unrealized profits to open new positions, um, for example, on your perpetual swap contract. Um, and that is basically to say like the profits were lost, it's settled in almost real time. 
And as far as I know, like no other exchanges are offering this at the moment. And most of other exchanges are, are, are settle your unrealized profits uh, daily or even on a weekly basis. We settle it in almost real time. Oh, that's kind of some 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 backend stuff that we have we have we have been working on very hard to build uh, to be able to achieve this feature. Oh, I see. So the the profit and loss is settled in real time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know there. If you make some money, you could withdraw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's a lot of exchange. They're holding your profit even after you close your position in the futures contract. That you need to hold it for a week or until the uh, expiration date happens. And a lot yes. of times, I heard that there's even crawbacks or uh, basically, if some uh, ADL or you know uh, uh, overdraft uh, contract overdraft happened, uh, they will mm. crawl back some of the profit uh, you made to cover the extra loss. And this is why they are holding your profit until the expiration contract. So we're not gonna do that, right? Uh no, we're not going to do that because we have a much better risk management system in place. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is very, very yeah, good. Definitely a ADL is the worst thing that traders want to want to say because if, if I, I'm right, I don't want right. to pay other people's loss. I mean, you, you said it, uh, the futures contract is going to be sharing the same uh, uh, insurance pool with uh, uh, yep. the perpetual contract. And at the moment, our our pool is pretty sick. So I, I don't think, uh, at least for the BTC contract, <laughs> it's going to happen right. anytime soon. Uh, yep. You know, the insurance pool is built for uh, being a buffer for, for to prevent that from happening. Very yep. good. So, uh, you know, I heard some very good features uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, the audience here are eager to see this new product. Uh, so when can we expect this product to be launched? Uh, so by the end of uh, Q3, we're going to finish the development work uh, and early uh, Q4, we're going to prepare the official launch. Um, by then, people will be able to use it. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, we recently launched a few cool features uh, like the strategy alert and the mutual insurance. Uh, like we just talked about before the show, uh, Strategy Alert is uh, becoming very popular. Um, almost more than 50% yeah. of our mobile users are, are, are using the Strategy Alert on a daily basis. Are these cool features going to be supporting this new contract? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, we are in the development work uh, for, for, this, uh, uh, being, for, for people to be able to use the tools together with the new contract. Okay. All right. Very cool. Um, I guess the first launch will be the BTC inverse, and then after that, follow that will be you know uh, the regular contract we have Ethereum, uh, Ripple, and all, all that, right? Uh, yeah, correct. And also, we're gonna have this uh, USDT uh, futures contract as well in the future. Okay, very cool. This is very exciting. Okay, um, awesome. Um, so uh, I guess this is it, guys. Uh, this is the uh, discussion, be, you know, for our uh, upcoming uh, futures contract. Uh, it's going to be a quarterly. We're going to be launching a, you know, a BTC inverse USD uh, quarterly expiration contract. And it's got, you know, some really cool innovation uh, features packed with it. Uh, I guess if you guys have more questions, uh, you could uh, join our next AMA with, with Bill here in our Bybit Telegram. So uh, make sure you join that. So thank you guys for your time and I hope you like this episode. Yeah, thank you guys. See you next time.